That's the Wind Beach preset that we'll be analyzing as the first in a new anatomy of a preset series. As you can see from the video, this preset uses a wind-like filtered noise component at the bottom of Y that morphs into a more tidal, wave-like sound at the top of Y, again created with filtered noise. While this series assumes you have a basic understanding of Hawking Continuum Egan Matrix fundamentals, don't worry, we'll be reviewing all the concepts used as we go and not only look at what the preset is doing and also how it might be made more suitable for playing perhaps on the Continuum Mini and in future examples we'll also discuss how to optimize for the upcoming Egan Matrix module and Osmos. All four of these instruments can play the same Egan Matrix preset, however each has different playing techniques and functions that ideally require some presets to be tweaked for optimal performance. Well, let's take a little deeper view into the WinBeach preset. Here I've blown up just the components that are programmed in this Egan Matrix example. And as you can see, we have first a wind component that is using a shelving low-pass filter that is fed with noise. You can see on the noise line here a unity amount of noise and that low-pass filter which is on filter bank 4 here is then sent into again the unity amount into just a standard low-pass filter and that's in filter bank 5 and you can see filter bank 5 is sent to SLSR outputs. So that's the wind component Next, we have a beach component that does something very similar, only instead of using uh, these filter banks, it uses the bi-quad filter bank. So we have, as you can see here, a bi-quad filter that is not sent unity noise, but something less, and that is in filter bank A. Filter bank A, as you can see, is also sent to the SLSR master section, and that is the basics of what's going on here. Now we have to see how is it being programmed so that some of it is coming in on the bottom of Y, morphing into the other that's coming in on the top of Y. So here is the formula that's used for the win component. As you can see, the formula has W plus X plus Y being added together with W and X not being used. So basically it's Y being multiplied by Z basically front to back motion that is multiplied by pressure. And you can see the formula tails away with this inverse squared function to zero. Thus, when you're playing front to back, you're going to get the wind sound and it's going to tail off to nothing when you get to the top of Y. And that is going to be multiplied by Z. So the volume of this is going to be controlled basically by your pressure in this normal squared default function. Now let's take a look at the beach formula. It's similar. We have W plus X plus Y multiplied by Z with W and X not being used. But now the Y function is inverted. At the front of Y, it has value of zero and then it exponentially raises to its maximum point, which you see here is 0.25, not unity. We also saw the amount of noise into the big bank by quad filter was not unity. This is kind of showing you that you got to be careful with these big bank filters, especially when you're sending noise into them. Always turn your volume down when you're experimenting with these, and sending full unity amount of noise or anything into a big bank is always dangerous unless you really know what you're doing. So always start out by sending a little bit of input to a big bank and increase it if you think it's not enough. So the formulas are basically inverted on wind and beach, and that's how you get this nice morph. Now, in addition to the inverted formulas, 
The WinBeach preset also uses a blend formula for persistence controlled by bespoke control one that is duplicated on both sides of the preset. This allows you to bring up the sustain on the preset based on the setting of your bespoke control. We'll bring up the preset, select formula B. At the right, you'll see it uses a blend based on formula D where the primary is set to persistence equal to zero. And when I go to the secondary, persistence is set to max. And the motion that's used to go from the primary to the secondary is controlled by formula D in this case. If I look at formula D, that is simply setting up a bespoke control, bespoke control one, going from the minimum range to the maximum range. So we'll turn on our display, and if we play a note and release it, I won't get any persistence. I won't get any sustain. If I set that to the max, play the same note, I'm going to get a sustain pretty much forever. And I could set it anywhere in between, of course. and modify this with some controller so that it's constantly moving between values to get a more dynamic motion. That's a standard use of a blend. You'll see it used in preset formulas all the time. So one last thing to look at is what these filters are actually doing. First, let's remove the Big Bang component. We'll disable that. Put my cursor on the formula, press the space bar to disable press the space bar again to enable. And instead of hearing the combination of the filters, let's listen to them individually to begin with. We'll put my output on filter four, which is the shelving filter. That is sent unity amount of noise, as we said. The cutoff frequency is totally controlled by X. So as you move your finger, you will change the cutoff frequency and the bandwidth is controlled solely by pressure. As you press harder, the bandwidth gets lower and the cutoff frequency gets more pronounced. Let's bring up our scope that we have some averaging on. We'll press at the very bottom. That's where the wind component is at its strongest. And there you can see kind of a classic shelving filter where we have a cutoff frequency. I'm pressing lightly so the cutoff is not as pronounced as it will be when I press heavier and we have our shelving effect here. If I press harder, you can see the cutoff frequency is more pronounced. It's becoming a more perceptible tone and the shelving effect is not as great because my low bandwidth is really accentuating that frequency. I can move up and down. harder. I can make a dynamic wind sound with a tone coming out. And as I release pressure, I get a more noisy filtered sound. How about just the standard low pass filter? I'll do something similar. I will not feed that from the shelving filter. I will just out put it sending unity noise into that filter. In this case, X again controls the cutoff, but the bandwidth of that filter is set to 0.9. So relatively high bandwidth, which will reduce the cutoff peak. A peak that's very much less pronounced than when we had that very low bandwidth on the shelving filter and cutoff slope, you can see. So at a 0.9, I'm going to get just a noisy, windy sound. I'm not going to hear those distinct tones coming out. What happens if I put them together as intended? We'll 
send the shelving filter into the low pass filter and now the combined effect of those filters you can see the shelving effect goes away on the low pass filter output but I still maintain those distinct peaks from the low bandwidth that's being sent into the shelving filter So just using a low-pass filter by itself or a shelving filter by itself doesn't give the effect that Ed wanted by combining those two filters. Before we leave the simple filters, one thing we should note, you'll notice that you have the option of selecting a cascade for these filters, basically a filter slope. If you're using a two-pole filter such as we're using here, these will produce a 12 dB cutoff per cascade. So the low pass filter, for example, cascade one will give you 12 dB per octave, two, 24 dB, 36 dB, and at the highest setting, 48 dB roll off. I've gone through and set both filters to cascade one, two, three, and four, and the overall output you can see as you increase the cascade, that cutoff becomes steeper and steeper. Just something to note for these filters, and of course, you have more options than just the shelving filter and the low pass filter. There's low pass filter, high pass, band pass, band reject or notch filter, an all pass filter, two shelving filters, and two single pole filters, low and high pass. So a lot of simple filter options. But now let's take a look at the beach component that's using this biquad filter. We'll do the same thing. We'll disable the wind component and we'll enable the beach component. Now for the biquad filter, we said we're sending in 0.5 on noise, not unity. And X is still controlling the cutoff frequency of that biquad filter. But now we have filter spreads that you can set on this because this filter actually is a bank of filters that you can set from eight modes all the way up to 48 modes. Win Beach uses the default eight modes. We'll see what this actually does in a second. The frequency spread of the filter is set to a constant, as is the bandwidth and bandwidth spreads. Not very low values, as you can see. Well, what does this all mean in terms of the Big Bang filter? Here I have averaging on, so you get an overall picture of what's going on. There's the main cutoff frequency of the filter, and then there's this other high frequency component that's coming out. So there's a relatively high bandwidth and bandwidth spread on this filter. That is going to reduce the peaks that you actually can hear from the filter itself. You have a main cutoff, and then the other filters that are part of the bank, you really can't see what's going on at this high bandwidth. Let's take these values way down. See what happens now when we reduce the bandwidth. Now you can hear and see those individual biquad filter components. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the eighth one, our main on the left. Why is there this big gap between them? Well, it's because of this frequency spread. If I set that spread to a low value, the peaks will all come together. And you hear that almost as a blown panpipe-like windy effect, which is what you can use these biquads for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we can see our eight modes right there. Well, let's take this to 16, see what happens. I would expect to have more frequencies pop out now. That's exactly what happens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Obviously, this is not the effect that Ed wanted here, but by playing with all of these biquad filter parameters, you can get a very wide range of filtered noise sounds emulating all kinds of wind instruments. But that's not what Ed really wanted. 
we'll put everything back together again. And now the overall result. Our wind. The deep. Back to wind. And you can see as you go from wind to beach, and back to wind, that high frequency component comes in and goes back out. The wind beach preset is very wide dependent as we've seen. One of the issues that you might have is on the continuum mini, there's not very much Y range for you to play with. So a preset like this, where you want to have a lot of differentiation on Y, with the continuum mini, it's going to be a problem. What perhaps is something we can do to get around this? Well, what I tend to like to do is to use a pedal to give me a full range of motion instead of using Y in some situations where it makes sense to do that. So I have a modified preset here. What I've done is on the second bespoke control, I've put pedal one control. And I've set that up in the little editor function down here with bespoke two equals wind ped underscore wind underscore beach. The editor now supports this nice function where with underscores, you can actually add annotations within the control itself and I've done just that here. I've connected this up to the continue mini with a pedal and I set I squared C to zero on the continue mini which means use the pedal input as a pedal and with my pedal as you can see move this between the wind and the beach sound. And what I'll do now is program the outputs to use the pedal to morph instead of Y. How might you do that? Well, one way is I use two new formulas. For the wind component, I'll set W to go to minus one. I'll set that to be controlled by bespoke control two. And now as I move my pedal, that value will go from its default to zero to minus one instead of going to plus one if I had set it to one. And what I'll do is offset that with a constant Y of one. So now when I move the pedal, from min to max, I will move W through a range of zero to minus one. That is offset with a constant value of one, which will mean pedal going min to max will move from a value of one to zero times my pressure, which is exactly what the wind did using Y before. I'll use another formula. This one does the same thing. It's using the pedal on bespoke control two, and this one will move in the inverted motion just like it did before on Y. But now we'll go from a value of zero to 0.25 times my pressure, which is similar to what we did before. All right, I'll set my pedal to minimum. When I play a note on the continue mini, and it doesn't matter where it is on Y now because Y is a fixed value that's used as an offset to W, I get the wind component. Let me move the pedal now. It goes to beach and back again. And I have that nice full pedal range to use, whereas on the Continuum Mini, I would have a very limited Y range instead. And I can manually, or through some other controller, impose a little bit of sustain as well. So that's a trick that I often use with the Continuum Mini, reprogram Y to use pedal when I need to have a fuller range control on some value or values.